guys, Artosis here, bringing you some more CMSL, season number four. This is from the round of 24, and it's a best of one from Group D. It is Ruin, Protoss player, up and comer, going up against Shine, the old veteran, generally known as an aggressive Zerg and former ASL finalist, as well as the Observer for the GSL Codes. Uh, this is gonna be a great PVZ, I think. Shine always makes entertaining games. He's just, he's so cheesy, so aggressive, so brainy with his plays, but also can back that up with really strong macro plays as well, although we don't see it as often. Ruin is, I think, a Protoss player that I think of his PVZ actually a, a, a fair amount. I think he's still very much an up and comer and someone to look out for in the future for Protoss. Now the map is Optimizer, definitely one we've seen quite a bit recently. The double gas, the main, don't forget. The minerals, the small mineral patches here, which can lead to your island-ish expansion over there. Uh, definitely makes it a very interesting one where Protoss can get more gas early on uh, more easily than on a lot of other maps, which can just make it... Uh, I guess we get into late game for PvZ a bit more often because of that is what I'm trying to say. Uh, other PVZs, sometimes you see Protoss just kind of get stuck in a situation where they can't quite get that third gas. All that being said, Forge is on the way. Uh, we'll see. I don't think it's going to be like any sort of uh, cannon rush. Generally, cannon rushes don't work out so well. A Shine going to try to make sure of that maybe? No, he starts to follow the probe, but does run away. Probe coming over here. Let's see if he has a plan to do something like that. The Overlord is actually checking on him. He might want to make Shine think that he's going to cannon rush. Uh, that is definitely something that can be worthwhile. Yes, he's kind of walk. He's. It looks like he's trying to look suspicious with the probe. But again, cannon rush is not as good in StarCraft 1 as they are in StarCraft 2. Now, the Nexus goes down before any cannon. He actually scouts that it is, in fact, a forge... Uh, but yeah, it looks like no harm, no foul on both sides. Maybe the tiniest little bits of mind games going on, but no one's no one's biting. All right. So should be a little bit slow here in the beginning. Uh, as far as Ruin goes, it's just going to be about looking uh, at what his opening order is going to be. It's probably going to be a cannon after this gateway into his gas, Cybernetics Core, Stargate. Get the scout going while you get plus one in your your citadel. Pretty standard for Protoss. There's not like a lot of wiggle room with a forge expand opener. Over on Shine side though, there's definitely a bit more that you can see. A bit more that can be done. Right? He has thrown down his third hatchery, which is just completely common and normal. But from there, you gotta ask what does what does Shine want to do? I mean, he can go Zergling speed and try to push the probe away. Maybe do a Ling flood, uh, or even go into a three hatch hydralisk play. He can rush up into Lair, and that Lair can be for drops, that Lair can be for Lurkers, that Lair can be for a Spire. And if it is a Spire, that can be for Mutas, or it can just be for Scourge to push back the Corsairs. So there's a ton of options open to Shine, and we just kind of have to wait and see which of those options he wants to go for, because he's a player that really has a full range that he'll end up using. So the layer being made in the natural. Uh, it's always smart for the Zerg to make the layer where the scouting worker is not. Uh, generally, you can make it at the main or the, the natural, and it doesn't make that much of a difference because if you lose one of those, you're basically going to lose the game anyways. Whereas it can make your opponent's timings off a little bit. They might think, oh gosh, what is he spending his gas on? Is it is it circling speed or did he make a layer? And by the time they get down there, sometimes they can't tell which came first. So anyways, Shine does get that layer going. Zergling Speed is on the way as well, just right there after. Over on this side for Ruin. Yeah, just as expected. He's getting his second gas relatively quickly. That generally means that what we'll be seeing is the Citadel followed by the Templar Archives relatively quickly so that he can get a, a Dark Templar or two out on the map. We'll see if that's what he ends up going for. Spire coming up for Shine. Now, it used to be that you could tell if someone was going for mutas by if they have the second gas, but there's a lot of mind games uh, mixed in with that now, too. So I feel like it doesn't mean as much anymore. You can definitely, off of one gas, still make a few mutas and mess up a Protoss that's not ready for that. 
Some speedlings running down. Oh, 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 oh! Oh my god, looks like he gets some probes in the way just in the nick of time here. One Ling ends up getting in after getting one cannon hit. So we'll see what Shine can get done with this, you know. Some Zergs could actually do some significant damage, but a couple probes being sent out, you can see how serious this is to have even one Zergling in your base that has a speed upgrade. Corsair coming out. We have the Citadel of Adun, as well as, yeah, there it is, that Templar Archives. Kind of shown to us from that second gas. Now, uh, over on the side of Shine, his Spire is almost done. He's got about 450 gas, so he can make some mutas if he wants. Few zealots coming across the map, but plenty of lings to just clean those up. The Corsair actually sitting, not doing much. Uh, he started microing those zealots pretty heavily. Yeah, you can see he's got them split a, a little bit. So the Corsair is actually sitting, really not figuring out what's going on. In fact, he could mess up now with his timing when he flies in and fly into some Scourge, which would be brutal. Well, saying Corsair coming. Okay, he finally finds it, gets them together. All the zealots have been eliminated. A carapace upgrade coming for Shine. So that actually points more towards that Shine might want to go heavy mutas. Over on the side of Ruin, we do have that Dark Templar on the way. Another gateway getting plus one air attack for his Corsairs as well. Just a creep colony as well as a hatchery. Yeah, I'm actually really excited to see what Shine wants to end up doing here. He's got a few Scourge out. Three Corsairs coming across the map. You know, if three Corsairs fly up towards the Scourge, sometimes the Scourge can hit and actually take one out. And if you can reduce the count of the Corsairs at all, that's going to make that Carapace upgrade very strong with your Mutas. Okay, so he comes up and targets, and as you can see, just barely kills one of them. The other one does end up connecting. He is going to knock out this Overlord. Now, you got to watch out because a DT is on the way. Uh-oh, for Shine. This is an issue. Now, there are two Overlords uh, being hatched here. And this, oh my gosh, the DT actually only gets one drone. That's very impressive that he got that out of there. Now, targeting down this egg, and he will be able to kill the egg before the Overlord's out, but not a second one. The second one is going to be uh, popping out. Yeah, there it is. Shine microing his drones very carefully. Doesn't want to lose them to this DT. All right, runs up with the lings. Does a bit of a surround. <laughs> and it steps out where it can't be detected anymore. All right, more Corsairs being made. And look at that. There it is. The Mutalisks being made right now. Now, the DT pops its head in over here. Oh, let's... He sees the Hydralisk in. I don't think he's really seen the Mutas yet. He has Psystorm on the way. Still making Corsairs, luckily, for him. And he actually has a fair amount. Five Corsairs with plus one attack, two shot of Scourge. So... Uh, you can actually start to fight against Scourge uh, at that point pretty darn well. Coming over for this Overlord. Looks like another Sunken on the way. It's going to allow that DT to get back in here again. No detection. In fact, he's not even making an Overlord right now. This one's going to fly all the way up there. So the DT harassment actually doing fantastically right now for Ruin. Now Shine trying to track down these Corsairs. If he can catch and kill these, it will be gigantic. Barely misses the interception there. So they will get away. He's seen the giant count. And now what we're going to likely see is maybe an Archon made. But still, I think he'll make continual Corsairs up to 11. He's got six at the moment. But oh my god. This DT during all of that, it killed both the Sunkens. I think it got a few drones in there as well. It had 12 kills at the end of the day. Fantastically done. So, yeah, we do see an Archon is in production. Where is that Archon? There it is. Looks like a pylon warping in. Still more Corsairs being made. And, yeah, once we get up to Corsair uh, Archon with Zealots and some Psystorms in there, these Mutas are going to have a very hard time. But they do have that plus one Carapace. He hasn't started plus two as of yet. But, uh, you know, you need a Fleet Beacon to get plus two air attack. So you kind of have equalized their air attack already with that armor. He okay, flies in with these mutas. Picks off that High Templar very quickly. Now the Archon going to stay underneath these Corsairs. Archon, of course, can one-hit any Scourge that chase them. Some nice moving shots here from Ruin. Wow, look at that. The mutas taking so much damage right now. Trying to fly back home. They actually turned to fight 
some Scourge coming in for that flank, but the amount of damage done is significant. The Archon comes up like a badass to put some extra damage in there. The Zot's now hitting this third base location. Definitely some heavy damage going to be dealt. Now, the Muta's coming up and actually fighting. The Corsair's coming to try to knock out these Muta's. Did he overcommit on those Corsairs? It looks like they're all gonna... No, two of them left over. And the Muta's start to shred. Uh-oh. Shine in some serious trouble here. And I... Th yeah, Ruin is actually just gonna kill this base. That's gonna be that for this base. Two hatcheries, an evolution chamber, all those drones, all that mining, gone now. Awesomely done. Now, the Muta's still trying to pick off Corsairs as best they can. They are so low. They are only a few Corsair hits away or an Archon hit away from death. Now, still Shine making, making those Mutas. He is getting the plus two Carapace. He has been for a little bit now. So when he gets that, he'll actually start to win fights against the Corsairs much, much better. But he's lost a lot of mutas. He's lost a lot of his economy. We're going to have to see some great tricks, some great maneuvering, some great tactics out of Shine to come back here. Ruin continuing to pop out as many uh, Zealots as he can. Oh, a beautiful Psystorm goes down on those mutas, but there's no other anti-air here now. So the mutas... Start to go to work on these probes. Lots of damage being dealt. Muta's finally finding a bunch of value for themselves. More and more being created right now. It's like Dragoon range on the way. Sometimes you do see uh, Dragoons added in with armies like this to try to keep those Mutas from diving in with too low of health. Hmm... Okay, so Shine, gonna go up and try to retake this base. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a Dark Templar on the map anywhere. Let me take a look. Yeah, it doesn't seem so. I think I think uh, Ruin has pretty much given up on making Dark Templars. Instead, we see uh, very heavy Zealot, some Archons, and a bunch of High Templars. Of course, still making those Corsairs as well, trying to replenish his fleet that he lost. Now the Mutas flying into this third base once again. Dealing some significant damage to those probes. As the Corsairs come up, they do turn around. They don't quite have that plus two carapace yet, but it's almost there now. All right, the Muta's flying down to the south. Might be diving into the main base. Shine, just looking for edges anywhere he can. Single Zella out the map. <laughs> Hitting this hatchery, trying to stop that third base from being retaken. Of course, Shine has taken this kind of island base. Continuing to macro up. Couple evolution chambers coming. Hatchery as well. We see no ground upgrades as of yet. And he is switching into some Hydras now. Getting that Lurker upgrade as well. In fact, it might just be very Lurker heavy for him. I wouldn't be surprised if he skips out on the Hydras. Because the Hydras are never really going to do anything against this army. Alright, Psystorm comes down as these fly in. Trying to pick off as many of the High Templars as possible. He actually gets a few of them. Makes some... Uh, some storms get cast as well, but take some damage to those mutas. Now the Zod's getting on top of these mor morphing lurker eggs. That's really good for Ruin, because if these just went up here and burrowed, there's no detection with this army. So he would actually be able to probably defend this hatchery, but instead the three lurker eggs get taken out as well as that hatchery, and Ruin continues to stay in control of this game. He's up quite a bit of supply right now. You can see more and more Static D being added from Shine. Now, here's the funny thing. Ruin is well ahead. It definitely looks to me like he's going to win this game. But Shine knows how to play a position like this. This is, like, he's a very brainy player. And, uh, like, just watching him make these moves where he's like, okay, you know what? The Mutas are not perfect, but we can't go into Hydras. So let's, it's like, okay, Lurker upgrade. More mutas, make a bunch of sunken so you don't just die. And I think what he'll probably start doing is making huge moves like this. Look at this. He's running in here now. Uh, Psystorm's awaiting him. Oh my god, amazing Psystorm's. But he's got to make a very big move, do some damage, force the army back, and then run away. He can't do an engagement with his army against his opponent's army. He needs to gain value, do damage over and over and over, and then run away. All right, looks like he's trying to get rid of this Nexus. Does not quite get it. Tries to still, but 
The Corsairs deal massive damage to those Mutas. Now, the Mutas back out, but they did force the cancel. So, you know, that's like a small victory, but he did lose quite a bit. If only he had one more base, this would be a lot better for him. You see, he has taken that additional geyser that's going to let him make more Mutas. A little bit quicker. Upset gas income. You can still see he has quite a bit of bank there. But again, how do you fight this? This army looking so scary indeed. Dark Archon being added in is absolutely fantastic. The Maelstrom on a clump of Mutas is so strong. Actually goes after... Oh, he gets the shuttle. I'm not sure what was in there, but any shuttle kill is huge. Because it allows this base to continue to be uh, mining without any problem. Lurker is being created now. It is definitely a switch into Lurker Ling. Again, love the ideas here from Shine. Comes down, sweeps into this base, flies out once again. Not interested in a full engagement, nor should he be. But Ruin is getting close to maxed out. And as you get maxed out, it's like, well, you're not going to get any better. I think it's time to attack. You can see that Maelstrom just now finishing up. So the Dark Archon will be extremely useful. Look at this. We have 24 Mutas flying around the middle of the map. And they do have that plus two Carapace. No attack upgrades, but really the Carapace is much more important. Still Ruin. Running back and forth on the map. Just kind of zoning. Ah, uh, I love it. He expects the sweep in here once again. Let's see it. The Maelstrom going to be so strong. Oh, and he actually catches quite a few Mutas. Looks like he's going to kill seven, eight Mutas, I think it was. A huge amount of damage. Beautiful spell casting there from Ruin. Now Shine, not to be deterred, continues to run forward, but flying through so much Psystorm Storm damage. Flies out of there. Yeah, can't come in here either. Three Psystorms Storms waiting for him as well as a bunch of cannons. Ruin getting ready to do another attack. A handful of lurkers here. A single observer. Maybe he can actually, with his mutas and the overlords, pick this off. But he might actually lose all the lurkers before he can even get them over here. Psystorms go down. Yeah, he just cancels the base and he is going to run. No way, no how to stop that right now. Some lings being sent out onto the map. They do have 1-1 one -one upgrades now, so going to be reasonably powerful. Adrenal on the way for them as we are on Hive Tech. And the Mutas flying through the center, dealing a little bit of damage to the army and flying elsewhere. But it looks like Ruin is sealed up pretty tight everywhere. He's up a good 90 supply overall. Almost all of that in army. He's got a lot of Psy Storms. He's got some solid upgrades at 2-2 for his ground forces. So up two upgrades in comparison to all the units of Shine. And it looks like he wants to break in. Some Scourge coming out. Take out a Corsair. Targeting down what he can. Some Psystorms going down on these Lings. But the Sunkins are going to make it very hard to break in here. The Mute is still flying around a little bit. Still such a scary defensive composition here at this base. So, looks like... No, his Mutas fly away. I think he's... I guess he's decided there's just too much splash damage. Too much anti-air here for his Mutas to come back. Now pushing forward, he's starting to break through the sunken lines. Not a lot else here. A few lings popping out here and there. But, I mean, they're fighting in these little choke points against Zealots, so they're not going to do all that well. The Dragoon's really starting to punch through these sunks. I think it's time to bring everything back and actually hit him. And here we go. Here come those Mutas. Do we have storms? Oh my god, huge storm onto those Mutas. Now, he is killing off a lot of these Dragoons, but his Mutalist count has been absolutely decimated. We only have 12 Mutas left over here. And while he might be able to clear a lot of this... Oh my god, the Archon hit gets so many. There's really nothing left here for Shine. He's got a little bit of Static D. He's still got a good bank, don't get me wrong there. But this army that we have left over from Ruin, the reinforcements coming across the map as well. It doesn't seem like a, a, an army strong enough to break out of here can be made, but he's actually somehow getting into ultras. How does he even afford it? I will never know. Kitness plating on the way. Trying to get these high armor ultras out to help deal with all this. I guess Ultraling Defiler 
could be good in this type of situation. But a continued attack coming out here. Dark Arcana at full mana. Here comes that first Ultra. Some storms coming down on these flanking lurkers. No, uh, I guess he has no detection right there, so they'll deal some damage, but there's like nothing left here for Shine. Bringing up his few remaining units. Looks like there's a double observer here as well. Storms going down even on the gas drones. Completely needless there. And out come the few ultras. Can these actually fight double size storm? Maelstrom's them as well. Maelstroming absolutely everything. And this just has to be the end as more zealots come up for the flank. Ruins production out of control right now while he's up over 120 supply. And I think that this is just about it. Shine. Yeah, GG's. And Ruin takes down Shine.